So if you've watched almost any of my content, it might be pretty obvious that I'm very into this little game called Basements and Big Lizards. I mean, Dungeons and Dragons. A little bit of context if you aren't familiar. D&D is a tabletop role-playing game where you and a bunch of your friends basically play pretend, but with additional math. Each player at the table makes and places their own character, and each character has their character class, like fighter, rogue, or bard, which basically determines what they do in combat and what skills they have, their ancestry, which is what type of being they are, human, dwarf, elf, etc., and stats that determine how good they are at certain things. A D&D party is usually three to six players, but this can vary quite a bit. In addition to all the players, you also have your DM, the dungeon master, who basically runs the world, role plays all the other people living in the world, and guides the players on their adventures. D&D is like this weird, eclectic mix of a game, improvisational theater, and watching your friends struggle with basic addition when rolling dice to determine how well they perform certain make-believe actions. It's also fun because the game is really freeform and customizable. There's a ton of variety when creating a character or coming up with a story, and if something in the rulebook doesn't fit exactly what you want to do, you can always make up your own stuff to use for the game, which is called Homebrew. Basically, D&D is a lot of fun and has been one of my most valued hobbies for the past several years. However, like many things in my life, I didn't get into D&D the way a person usually would. Nope, I awkwardly fell backwards into D&D and ended up taking a super roundabout road to a hobby which has become a fairly big part of my life. And in today's video, I want to talk about it. How I stumbled into being a total nerd for Dungeons & Dragons, some fun stuff that happened along the way, and some stories from the campaigns I've been a part of over the years. But first, really quick, let's do Hey Star, what you drawing? The art in the background of this video is actually art of two of my D&D characters, Emery, a tiefling fighter, and Verity, a tiefling paladin. Yeah, I like tieflings if it wasn't obvious. I aspire to someday have an entire rainbow of them, but anyway. I'm working on making my first ever set of acrylic standees and wanted to include some of my D&D characters in the mix because I love them. And who wouldn't want some cute tieflings sitting on their desk, huh? Anyway, Emery and Verity acrylic stands will be coming to my shop relatively soon, sometime in September. I'll add a little link to the description when they're ready, or you can join the mailing list on my store website if you'd like to get an email when they're available. But yeah, with that out of the way, let's get into the video. My first exposure to D&D happened around the early 2010s, before D&D really hit the mainstream. My main group of friends all ended up playing in a 3.5e campaign and met up once a week at our school's game club to play together. I could have joined in on this if I had wanted, but between school and my at-the-time webcomic, I brushed it off as something I didn't really have time for. I do remember sitting in on one or two of their sessions, but seeing as I didn't really have any context for what was going on, I mostly tuned them out. They all seemed like they were having a lot of fun, and they did try to explain some of the campaign jokes to me, but I was pretty thoroughly out of the loop. A few years passed, I graduated college, and the concept of D&D faded into the back of my mind for a few years. Like I said, this was before D&D really hit the big time. I knew it was a thing that existed, but I didn't really have any interest in it. However, after I graduated, I was eventually able to move into an apartment with a friend, and I remember very vividly one evening, I was hanging out in my room, minding my own business, listening to my friend messing around in the kitchen with a podcast playing on her phone, when she suddenly busted out laughing hysterically. I came out to ask her what was so funny, and she explained that she was listening to this new podcast she'd found. I asked her what it was, and she said, it's a D&D podcast. The people record themselves playing a game of D&D together and edit it into a radio play style podcast. It's called The Adventure Zone. And I was like, oh, neat. And went back to my room and did not think about it anymore. <laughs> this happened a few more times over the next couple of weeks. I occasionally hear my roommate listening to the show and laughing while she did the dishes or cooked since my room was close to the kitchen. But I didn't really listen to podcasts and didn't have much of any interest in D&D, so I wasn't especially curious about it. Until about a year later. I'm sitting at my desk at my office job, scrolling through Twitter while on break between assignments, and one of the artists I follow posts an art piece. The caption says something along the lines of, Here's my art for the hashtag adventure zine. I keep scrolling, and I see another artist posting another piece, also for this adventure zine. And then another. And another. And for almost a week, I kept seeing artists I followed posting pieces they had contributed to this adventure zine project, which, as I came to find out, was a fanzine where a bunch of artists contributed pieces that were then compiled together into a book and sold for charity. 
And the theme of this zine? The Adventure Zone. That same show that my roommate loved so much. Seeing all the art pieces people were submitting was what really started making me intrigued. What was this series? Who were these characters? What was happening in these illustrations? And what was so great about this show? And eventually, that curiosity got the better of me. I downloaded the show and started listening. And I liked it. The first few episodes are a little slow as the show find its rhythm throughout the first story arc, but the jokes and funny moments kept me listening and it made for excellent background noise while I toiled away at work. Plus, the fact that they sort of explained how D&D was played as they went helped get my head around the mechanics of the game. The first campaign in the Adventure Zone, called the Adventure Zone Balance, or just Taz Balance, is broken up into a couple different arcs. The first arc is a very standard D&D dungeon crawl with some interesting story hooks thrown in at the end. The second arc is a murder mystery on a train, and when I reached the third arc... I won't spoil anything, but the ending of the third arc legitimately made me cry. And if you've listened to this show, you know exactly what moment I'm talking about. By that point, I had become so emotionally invested in this series, in these characters and their story, that I was moved to tears by one little musical stinger. I remember having to go hide in the office bathroom for a few minutes so my coworkers wouldn't ask why I'd suddenly burst into tears in the middle of a random Tuesday. And I think at that moment, subconsciously, I knew this was something special, and I was hooked. Over the next few weeks, I marathoned the rest of the series, listening at all hours during my workday, my commute to and from work, and in the evenings while I was toiling away on early cast-off pages. The show wasn't finished at that point. When I finally got caught up, they had just started the Suffering Game arc, which was so hard to wait two weeks between episodes four. Oh my god. I kept up with the series for the rest of the first season, listening to every episode as it came out, yelling about each new episode with my friends and on Twitter, and drawing fan art. A lot of fan art. I also ended up cosplaying multiple versions of both Taco and Loop, and even made a flaming raging poison sword of doom prop that had lights in it so it could flicker like a real flame sword. And I mean, I'm gonna be honest here. My love of those two characters, both of them being elves, was a big point where I started falling in love with pointy-eared characters, to the point I can honestly, at least partially, blame Taz for making me want to make my VTuber and channel mask on an elf character. This show took over my brain, and I am not exaggerating. I think The Adventure Zone was the first fandom I was ever really actively involved in. At the very least, it was the most obsessed I had ever been over a series. And all of it was just based on a D&D &D campaign that three brothers and their dad played together on a podcast. It was such a silly concept, and I want to laugh and say, yeah, that is silly. It's really silly to be so emotionally invested in something like that. And then I flash back to the end of the first series. I had just moved to Japan a few weeks prior and didn't have any internet at my apartment yet. I was on a work trip the day the final episode of Taz Balance dropped, and I remember being so fidgety and antsy the entire train ride back to my city. Once I was there, I hunkered down in the corner and used the station's free Wi-Fi to download the episode before catching a bus home. And I remember just ugly crying at that last episode, mostly the one bit with Magnus at the end. If you've listened to the show, you know what part I'm talking about, you know what bit I mean. That was literally the hardest I have ever cried over a piece of media. I was just laying on my couch and sobbing for like 30 minutes straight, and I remember being extremely grateful that I didn't have any neighbors in the apartments directly next to me. It was a lot. <laughs> I continued listening to the show even after the first storyline ended, drew a lot of fan art, and kept being actively involved in the fandom. And the high point of my fandom involvement, however, was getting picked to contribute a piece to the fan art section at the back of the Taz graphic novels. If you look in the back of volume two, some of my art is in there, and I still get very excited every time I see it on the shelf of the bookstore. It's one of the coolest things I have ever been involved in, and I am still so stoked that it happened. Anyway, all this to say, listening to The Adventure Zone and getting so invested in the series was the big thing that sparked my initial interest in D&D. I unfortunately didn't really know how to start a campaign or how to find a group to play with, so I ended up just funneling my interest into listening to more D&D shows. 
I remember my first introduction to Critical Role, arguably the biggest D&D series on the market currently, was because some friends of mine from college made a cosplay music video about the series and ended up getting featured as guests on Critical Role's weekly talk show, Talks Machina. I remember watching that episode live and yelling excitedly at the screen like, oh my god, those are my friends! Look at them, they're so cool! Oh my god! And not having any context for anything they were talking about because I hadn't watched any Critical Role yet. I did eventually get into the series, but it wasn't until after Taz Balance wrapped up and I was searching for something new to listen to. I didn't really get into their first campaign, but around the time I started listening, their second campaign had just started a few months earlier, and I fell in love with the Mighty Nine hard and fast. And then suddenly I was hooked on Critical Role as well. I was never as obsessed with it as I was with Taz, but I enjoyed the characters and their shenanigans. Caleb's my favorite because I love me some sad magic boys, but I also have a soft spot for Bo and Jester, and I also literally named my cat Molly, so that definitely tells you something. I bounced around in a couple other D&D related fandoms after that, but again, didn't really have a way to play it myself. Until one day, my old roommate, the one who originally got me into Taz, told me that she wanted to start a TTRPG campaign. However, it wouldn't be D&D. She wanted to get a group together to play another game called Monster of the Week. And we did. We eventually got a group together of our friends and played once a month over Discord voice chat, role-playing as a group of monster hunters in a fictional backwater Texas town. My character, Thalia, was a wannabe rock star who ran away from the college her rich family forced her to attend, and now she's a monster hunter. Also, at one point, she touched a ghost and it gave her magic powers. It was a whole thing. We played that game for a few years before the momentum eventually fizzled out, but in the meantime, I actually managed to dip my toes into D&D proper. I got to play in a few one-shots organized by friends and had a great time playing through some short stories and coming up with characters for them. Some of my favorites include Felix, a perky tiefling bard who's actually a changeling with amnesia and doesn't realize that she's a changeling, searching for her lost memories in a family she remembers nothing about as well as Storm, Felix's lost sibling who takes on multiple identities in the search for his missing sister, including the very cocky and flamboyant Zephyr, who is basically if Metaton from Undertale was a tiefling. I love him very much. I enjoyed playing in these shorter mini D&D games, but I kept yearning for a longer campaign. I had enjoyed our Monster of the Week campaign a lot, but was itching for something more in the line of the high fantasy that D&D was known for. And then, around early 2020, my college pals, who I still kept in contact with via our private Discord server, started saying things like, Man, I miss playing D&D. We should start that up again. And then they'd get a bunch of responses from the other members agreeing that, Yeah, we should totally start a D&D campaign. And then, crickets. A few weeks later, it would happen again. Oh man, wouldn't it be cool if we started a new D&D campaign? That would be so much fun. Yeah, it would be. Cricket, cricket, cricket. <laughs> because isn't that just the way with D&D? Everybody wants to be a player, nobody wants to be the DM. But without a DM, you don't really have a game. It's a fairly common problem in the community. Anyway, I had been toying with the idea of DMing a campaign myself since I was interested in writing stories and world building and things of that nature. I mean, I had written a whole fantasy comic after all. But I chickened out at almost every opportunity because I hadn't even played in a D&D campaign before. How was I supposed to run one myself? And all my friends had lots of experience from playing together in college, so surely my lack of experience would be my downfall. And then it happened again. And, oh man, I wish we could play D&D together message was dropped onto the server. But this time, I replied, Well... I have been wanting to try DMing. And it was all downhill from there. I found a few one-shots online that were fairly easy to run for a beginner DMs, picked my favorite, and spent about five hours running through the entire one-shot with a group of friends as they attempted to save a wizard who had been turned into a sheep by their evil apprentice. It was chaotic and messy, and I barely knew what I was doing at any given moment, but we all had so much fun that I knew it couldn't be the last time we did it. I thought to myself, eh, I've listened to enough Adventure Zone and Critical Role. I know how to do this. I'll be fine. And from there, I tossed all the game modules aside and jumped headfirst into making a fully homebrewed campaign for my group of friends. That was in the summer of 2020, and that campaign is still running. Currently, the party is a total of eight players, which is 
way too many people, but we make it work because all of us have known each other for over a decade and we get along so well that we just kind of make it work. I'm still doing the campaign entirely homebrew, which means everything that happens is just coming straight out of my own brain, with the exception of things like monsters and enemies that I still mostly get from D&D sourcebooks. The basic storyline is that all the player characters are members of an adventurer's guild, running around and helping solve people's problems. It's pretty simplistic, and it mostly stems from the fact that I originally planned the campaign to be a series of one-off adventures. But of course, then I started having big plot ideas and the story got a lot more complex, but I'm having fun and my players are having fun and that's what's important. Just for fun, here's some of the story arcs that my players have been on so far. In the initial one shot, they weren't able to get the polymorphed sheep wizard to change back into his normal self. So one of the earlier arcs involved helping him undo the spell that was cast on him. Part of this involved going to a place called Wizard Hut, which was based on a joke we all kept making based on that one my brother, my brother and me bit. Where is Wizard Hut? And then I made it into a real place in the game. Wizard Hut is part magical escape room, part fast food restaurant, and one of the puzzles was a magical game of football. It might be the best thing I've ever made. <laughs> For their first ever major story arc, the party arrived at a walled city called Havenloft, deep in the center of a treacherous mountain range. The city is a prime stopping point for travelers along various trade routes, but is under constant danger of attacks from the monsters that lurk outside the walls. However, recently the city has been facing threats from inside as well, as prisoners kept within the city prison have all been dying under mysterious circumstances. The city's villagers have started calling it the Reaper's Curse, saying that people who commit a crime within the city's walls and wind up in the prison are destined to die there. And I know what you're thinking. Yes, I absolutely based this arc off of Death Note, but it's fantasy Death Note, which makes it cooler. <laughs> In the next arc, the party investigated a series of disappearances and kidnapping, where performers of all stripes were being spirited away in the night, including the mother of a new party member. Their investigation eventually led them to a waterfront city called Catalenza, where the kidnapped performers were being brainwashed to perform in an enormous carnival. But who is running the show and why? Hmm, a mystery. <laughs> And in the most recent arc, the party arrives to the hometown of another player character, only to discover that the small fishing village has fallen on hard times since all the fish and sea creatures in the bay have mysteriously disappeared. In addition, mysterious gold and treasure has started washing up on the beach. What few creatures do remain in the bay have started going berserk and attacking both people and ships. And rumors have been flying all over town about what could be causing all these problems and if they might all be connected somehow. Spoiler alert. They are. Going into a full recap of everything that has happened in the campaign so far could be an entire video by itself, so I'll stop there. But if folks are interested, maybe I'll make some proper D&D storytime videos where I go into the events of each arc in more detail? However, if you're curious about the happenings in the campaign and don't really want to wait for that, one of my players has been live tweeting each session since we started and has compiled them all into a page on their website that you can read through at your leisure. I'll leave the link in that for the description, but just for fun, here's some out of context moments from the campaign transcripts. Okay, if you're going to insist you can hear someone taking a shit through a brick wall, I'm gonna need you to make a perception check. Hey, are you any good at kidnapping? I am not good at any sort of crimes. Do not ask me any more questions. Okay, so wyverns, you know how Goofy and Pluto are both dogs, but one is the servant and one is the master? Yeah, this is the Pluto of the dragon world. Nice to meet ya. My name's Scam Likely. That is a very suspicious name. Please do not do any crimes in my town. I hate these wolves. I hate you and your cacophony of wolves. I'm so aggravated. Session 42, in which our heroes give the DM hypertension by spending two real life hours arguing about how to get down from a mountain. And yes, this is actually a thing that happened that spent two real life hours trying to figure out how to descend a, a pretty easy to descend mountain. They could have just said we walk down the mountain and I would have let them do that. And they spent two hours trying to figure out how to tie a centaur to a giant bat so that they could descend the mountain faster. I just, oh my God. Conscious decided to make posters to recruit townsfolk to plant trees with us. They contain far too many references to nut as a verb to be clearly about planting trees and include a picture of his face. The poster reads, join the forest army. Do you want a nut? We can nut together. Join today and has a crude drawing of a man on it. Does Conch realize how this sounds? Of course not. 
<laughs> and then there's this picture that one of them drew. I just, I love it so much. So, like I said, the D&D campaign I run has been going for a few years, and I've really enjoyed my time with it. But after running a game for so long, I was still sad that I had never been able to really play in a longer D&D campaign. I had played in a handful of one-shots and kept coming up with cool character ideas that I would have loved to play in a longer campaign, but none of my close friends really had any interest or motivation to start their own campaign that I could play in. I tried looking online for groups to join, even joined a few looking for D&D group Discord servers, but none of my attempts really panned out. I had heard horror stories about people joining bad D&D groups or having negative experiences with random parties they had joined online, and I was really scared of that happening to me. And so I resigned myself to being the forever DM. Whenever I came up with a cool character idea, I'd end up using them as an NPC in the campaign I ran. And while I had a good time with this and even got to play through some really satisfying character arcs, I still felt like I was missing out. Another factor was that with my love of D&D initially stemming from D&D shows like The Adventure Zone, there was part of me that was starting to get interested in running a D&D show myself. I spent a lot of time waffling over the idea of starting a second campaign with a handful of folks from my home game and doing a live streamed D&D series, and I had a lot of ideas for it. I wanted to make character art for each of the player characters and NPCs, make cool stream overlays that could show off art for different locations, as well as battle maps for combat, all kinds of stuff. But as always, the biggest hurdle was time. I already had a lot on my plate and couldn't justify adding a high effort D&D show into the mix. That, plus the fact I was still a relatively inexperienced DM and the idea of running a D&D campaign with people watching made me really nervous. I had been streaming for a few years by this point and was itching to try something new with my streams, but unfortunately the idea of running a D&D show myself was pushed into the back of my mind, a dream that would likely never come to fruition. Until one day, I got an email. It was coming from someone named Jaycorn, and I recognized the name. The guy had raided me a handful of times on Twitch and had shown up in my chat occasionally as well. It said he was looking to start a live-streamed D&D show and was in the process of looking for players, and while I didn't really know the guy, I was intrigued. This sounded like a cool opportunity, and it would be a way for me to not only finally play D&D myself, but also be involved in an actual play series without having to run it myself. So I emailed him back immediately and told him I was interested, and everything after that was fine. <sighs> Except that's not really what happened, unfortunately, and this one is entirely on me. While it's true I was interested in joining the campaign, I was in a very bad mental state at the time I got this email. I had just lost my childhood dog of almost 16 years, and I was not taking it well. Combined with the fact that I had just been notified that I was basically getting kicked out of my apartment in a few months, and had also gotten into a small car accident on top of everything, I was a mess. It was the most depressed I had been in years, and I ended up neglecting a lot of stuff during my recovery time, including my email inbox. I was interested when I first saw the email, but due to how stressed and messed up in the head I was, I ended up ghosting him for almost two months. And by that point, I figured it was probably too late, that they had assumed I wasn't interested and moved on without me. But I still felt bad and wanted to give them some kind of a response, so I finally emailed back and said, Hey... I know it's probably too late, and if it's too difficult to add new people at this point, I totally understand, but I am still interested if you'd be willing to have me. And to my surprise, he said yes. And that's the short version of how I got roped into what's left of us. You might have heard me mention this game on some of my previous videos or live stream, but What's Left of Us is the D&D actual play series I'm part of. We started the show back at the start of 2022 and play once a month over on Jay's channel. I'll admit it was a bit nerve wracking at first. I was very suddenly introduced to a lot of new people and was nervous about doing a good job and not making a fool of myself live on stream. But we ended up all warming up to each other very quickly. Our characters ended up having an interesting chemistry and all of us players ended up getting along well too. The basic story follows our group of five characters. First up is Tim Tam, a young but intelligent gnome artificer who made a robot dog named Sparks McBarks who may be some kind of a god. I think Tim made a dog god by accident and we still don't know what's up with that, but I'm sure it's gonna be totally fine. 
Then there's Vernon, a human warlock con man who is trying to start a scarf business but got himself all wrapped up in a cult instead. Also, he's a real crabby guy. Don't look too deep into the meaning of that sentence. It's a perfectly normal sentence with no deeper meaning. Vernon is only a giant crab monster sometimes, and I'm sure that won't cause problems in the future. Next up is Rath Gerther, the bombastic half-orc bard who swears she's a legendary hero and has been doing a pretty good job of convincing everyone of that fact, including herself. There's also something going on where she might be turning into a mushroom colony, which is why this image exists. I'm sure that's fine though. Tim seems excited about it at least. And then there's Maldris, a changeling rogue who mostly keeps to themselves and was largely a mystery until we found out they had, at some point, pissed off an archfey who's now literally hunting them for sport and now it's everyone's problem. Again, I'm sure it will be fine, and we totally won't all get murdered by an archfey in the next episode of the show! And lastly, there's my character, Emery. Emery is basically what happens if you take Ariana, the angry blonde character from my webcomic cast off, and make her angrier and also a tiefling. The basic storyline is that she used to be the eldest daughter of a noble family until one day she got straight up murdered and replaced by some kind of body snatching doppelganger, then somehow ended up being brought back to life by some kind of phenomenal cosmic oopsie daisy. Now she's on a revenge quest, trying to take out the ones who wronged her and get her life back while also dealing with the consequences of a botched accidental resurrection. But if you want to know more, you'll just have to watch the show. I'll post the link to the full series down in the description, and if you're interested, please check out the series and subscribe to the D&D channel. We're trying to hit a thousand subscribers over there so we can start monetizing the series to help pay for things like a clip editor so your eyeballs are greatly appreciated. Plus, since we only play once a month, there's only 20-ish episodes and each one's only about two hours, so it wouldn't take that long to get caught up. And then you can watch new episodes live, and this coming episode, see us get killed by an archfey in real time! Yay! <laughs> I've been having a lot of fun with the show, and it's definitely been one of the highlights of the last two years for me. I've really enjoyed getting to hang out with all these new people, and play a new game of D&D, and it's just, it's just been a lot of fun. And earlier this year, we actually started a second non-streamed campaign with about the same group of people that we've been playing since spring, and who oh boy, it is also wild. It's also the campaign that I play Verity in. She's a sweet, soft baby who is so starkly different from Emery that it's honestly kind of funny. The two of them are absolute polar opposites. Verity's story is that she started out traveling with a group of friends from her small hometown, with the five of them dreaming of being famous adventurers one day. But not long after their adventure start, their camp is attacked overnight by a large monster, and Verity is knocked unconscious trying to shield her friends. When she wakes up, her friends are nowhere to be found, and when she finally makes her way back to her hometown in search of them, she instead finds their graves, as seemingly all but one of her friends had been killed in the attack on their camp. Only one member of the team seems to have survived besides Verity, a dwarf cleric named Rodin, but he's nowhere to be found. So now, Verity's mission is to find Rodin so she can get some answers about what happened and try to piece her life back together. But there's more going on with her than meets the eye. For example, why did her horns and tail suddenly turn into weird crystal formations when she got knocked out? Why does her hometown suddenly look so different than it did a few weeks ago? And why is another member of the party so focused on keeping an eye on her? While we don't livestream this game, if enough people are interested, maybe someday I'll make an entire video just talking about the events of this campaign. I'm genuinely so enamored with the story and characters, and even though we haven't been playing very long, it's been a lot of fun and I always look forward to our sessions. Even when it seems like terrible things are going to happen, which is a lot of the time. In case it wasn't obvious from the type of things I make, telling stories is something that's always been really important to me. Whether it's making comics, writing books, telling weird life stories on a YouTube channel, or just playing a silly game of make-believe with friends, D&D is one of so many ways to make a story and share it with people close to you. And in my experience, the people who play games like D&D are always so passionate and excited about the stories they get to tell. I've had countless conversations with other TTRPG fans at conventions who were so excited to tell me about their characters and the stories that happened in their own games. If anything I've mentioned in this video sounds even a little interesting to you, I encourage you to give tabletop games a try. And you don't even have to stick with D&D. D&D is the most well-known game, obviously, but there's dozens, if not hundreds, of other game systems out there to try, and all different types of interesting ways to play through a narrative with your friends. 
D&D and tabletop games in general have become such an important part of my life over the last few years, and I don't regret a single second of any of it. So I encourage all of you to give it a shot as well. Get out there, have some fun, and go on an adventure. Just maybe bring a calculator if you're not good at math. All right, that about does it for this video. Feel free to tell me some of your D&D stories in the comments. I'd love to hear about your campaigns and your characters, especially the tieflings. I love me some tieflings. If you also love tieflings, remember that the acrylic standees of Emery and Verity you watch me draw on this video will be going up on my shop soon. I don't have an exact ETA yet, but they should hopefully be arriving sometime in September. I'll be putting a link in the description when they're ready, and if there's enough interest, maybe I'll make some more acrylic stands with my other characters in the future. We'll see. Also, remember that if you love D&D and want to watch me play the grumpiest tiefling imaginable, head over to youtube.com slash thejaycorn and watch our show What's Left of Us. There's still time to get caught up before the next session at the end of the month, where we'll try really, really hard to not get killed by an archfey at level 5. I'm sure it will be fine. <laughs> anyway, that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed the D&D tales, and I will see you guys next time. Bye!